Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about a character from the Lost World. If you're only a fan of the film franchise, you may not know who Dr. Thorne is. But, if you've read through the Michael Crichton books, you'll know exactly who I'm talking about. In the second novel, Jack Thorne was introduced as a gray-haired, barrel-chested man of 55. Except for his wireframe glasses, Kelly thought he looked like he could have been a retired prize fighter. Often found swearing at his assistants and putting up with Richard Levine's dopey decisions, he plays a pretty intricate role in the book by helping Ian Malcolm's group during their adventures on Isla Sorna. In fact, in the novel, Thorne is the one responsible for creating the Challenger trailers and the high hide that would get used on the island. His business, Thorne Mobile Field Systems, being the inspiration for much of the gatherer tech that we'd see in the actual movie. Now, early on in development for the second film, believe it or not, much of the Lost World novel was actually going to be adapted for the big screen. And when I say adapted, I mean adapted faithfully. They were going to pretty much copy the story of the book and replicate the entire feel of Michael Crichton's second Jurassic story, with very little deviation compared to what actually went down in the final product. But of course, as with all of these films, things would eventually get changed. And much of the plot and action set pieces from the novel were abandoned in favor of something more explosive, to say the least. Still, one of the things that actually stuck around from the book for a pretty long time was the character of Dr. Thorne. Deep into the development of the second movie, Jack was still being considered for a major role in Spielberg's JP follow-up. In Jody Duncan's book, The Making of the Lost World Jurassic Park, there are actually storyboards that you can find illustrating the character during one of the movie's most iconic scenes, the tense moment when the T-Rexes push the trailers over the cliff. Here, we can see that Thorne is drawn rather similar to the way he's described in the novel. However, unlike the novel, he suffers a fate that would eventually go to Eddie Carr in the movie, where the two tyrannosaurs rip the man apart and send the RV tumbling over the cliffside. I've mentioned before in the past that David Kep worked hard with Spielberg developing the plot for the second movie, and during their time in pre-production, a lot of things got shifted around. The writer was quoted as saying that he'd often flip through the book and highlight portions that he believed stuck out to him each time he'd return to it. And this is the stuff that usually wound up staying in the later drafts. Obviously, Dr. Thorne didn't make an appearance in the film, so one could assume that the filmmakers just didn't think he was good enough to adapt. However, in truth, this is far from what really happened. Like I mentioned earlier, Jack Thorne was the one responsible for creating the Challenger trailers and the high hide in the book. He was basically that story's field equipment expert. Now, in the actual movie, all of these responsibilities were given to Eddie Carr, along with Thorne's noteworthy disagreeable personality when it came to others messing with his equipment. And of course, Eddie is the one that takes it upon himself to save Malcolm, Sarah, and Nick when all hell breaks loose on the island. Take another good look at the way Doc Thorne is represented in these storyboards. That guy should look really familiar to you if you grew up with the Lost World toy line from Kenner. But if you can't place it right away, don't worry, I'll go ahead and tell you. It's Eddie Carr. Sometime in development for the second movie, the decision was made to change Dr. Thorne's character name to Eddie and put most of the book version of Eddie Carr's personality into Vince Vaughn's character, Nick Van Owen. If you've read the book, you'll probably be well aware of Nick's action figure also looking way different from the movie version and a lot more like the Eddie Carr of Michael Crichton's story. David Kep chose to combine some of the characters in the Lost World in a similar way to what he'd done with the first Jurassic Park film. Combining Donald Gennaro with Ed Regis worked out pretty well in 1993, so there was no real reason to believe that combining Carr and Thorne wouldn't do the same in 1997. It should also be noted that most of Doc Thorne's actual look and even philosophical personality would ultimately be translated to big game hunter Roland Timbo, who kind of acts as a successful version of Robert Muldoon in this movie. Due to the shift in character names, physical likeness, and actual events that play out for the people on screen, some can understandably get a little confused on who is who and what is what when comparing the book to the film version of The Lost World. But when you break it down like this, I personally don't think it's too hard to follow. So in the end, while he initially would have been in the movie with proper likeness and name intact, over time, the character would evolve into Eddie Carr. His name cut from the film, but everything else pretty much living on in Richard Schiff's portrayal. Now, I'm curious to hear what all of you guys think about this. Do you think it was a good call to write the character like this in the film, or would you have preferred an unaltered book version? 
I personally enjoy both stories on their own merits, but I do actually like the movie version of The Lost World more. Which is weird because that's the opposite of how I feel about the first Jurassic Park story. But hey, whatever your own thoughts and personal opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that you all even continue to watch these videos. And I want to thank each and every one of you for all of your continued support. Now I'd like to thank all of you for watching this video and hope you all enjoy today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you on the next one guys, and as always, take it easy.